It's March. The grackles are cackling. Those are our local wildlife here in the great city of Houston. Hi, my name is Andrea. I'm a board certified dermatologist and get excited because in today's video we're going into Target. I come here about once a month and do these videos for you guys where I wander through the aisles and check out the skincare. You all really seem to enjoy them and Target is constantly getting in new stuff so let's go check it out. Looks like they have the Undefined Beauty R&R Day Serum. Is this a sunscreen? No, this is something different. I think this is their brightening product. This is for hyperpigmentation. It has niacinamide and tremella, which comes from mushroom. What form of vitamin C does this have? Magnesium is scorbyl phosphate. Now that is a stable form of vitamin C, but whether or not it gets into the skin and converts to ascorbic acid remains to be determined. This However, I highly recommend it. It is pricey. It's their R&R &R Sun Serum. It is a mineral tinted sunscreen. It also has niacinamide, which is helpful for redness and hyperpigmentation. Although if you're sensitive to it, then you'd want to avoid this. But it's got the tremella, which is mushroom extract. Moisture content. Anyways, this looks great on the skin, in my opinion. I, I love it. I'm currently wearing it. Bacuchiol is an antioxidant. It is not an alternative to retinol. Rosehip oil is always popular in borage seed oil. You know, those are emollients. The thing with oils, don't really reduce water loss from the skin particularly well, but they do kind of smooth everything out and improve the luminosity of the skin. They're also good if you've got flakiness. Bacuchiol, however, it, it can be irritating. I mean, anything can be irritating, but Bacuchiol, some people have a problem with. People like to make claims that Bacuchiol is like an alternative to retinol. It's not. I have a video on ingredients that you could consider as an alternative to retinol if you don't tolerate it because they offer some of the similar benefits that retinol does, like things like boosting up hyper boosting up collagen, smoothing out wrinkles, helping with oiliness, etc. But Bacuchiol does none of those things. It's 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 an antioxidant. Looks like our friend Versed came out with a, yet another new product, Luminizing Glow Drops. This was not here the last time I came in here, you guys. Last time I came in here, we talked about their retinol body lotion. There it is. But this is new, Luminizing Glow Drops with peptides and blackberry extract. What the heck is this? Use me if you want to bring the good lighting with you. A luminizing serum with sheer soft focus glitter-free pigments and peptides. It has iron oxides, mica, and titanium. So I guess it's just kind of is like a moisturizer with a little bit of shimmer. Now iron oxides, they can protect against certain wavelengths of visible light that contribute to hyperpigmentation. But it's simply not as straightforward as, oh, this has iron oxides. It's kind of the formulation overall, like the concentration of them. This looks new too. I'm, I'm kind of liking this little sack lunch packaging they've got going on here. Out of sight dark spot gel. This has kojic acid, which can chelate copper, which is necessary for that enzyme tyrosinase that it leads to pigment production. Orange fruit water. Um, Tranexamic acid applied topically is actually pretty good for redness, as is niacinamide. Tranexamic acid given systemically by a pill form can help with melasma. Applied topically, it's kind of hit or miss for hyperpigmentation. I heard word on the street, you guys, Versed is now at Walmart. They've really been popping out a lot of products. What's this Keep the Peace Acne Calming Cream Cleanser? Salicylic acid, 1.5%. See what they did there? They've got to stand out because you can usually find a salicylic acid cleanser that's two percent so they had to be like super edgy and and leave off half a percent they're like ooh, i'm just snarking how does 1.5 percent sal acid compare to two percent sal acid probably just depends on the formulation overall but salicylic acid it is helpful for controlling breakouts it's also good for if you deal with hyperpigmentation can help accelerate the rate of clearance of that we have the wall of sheet masks. Comment below, are you team sheet masks? If I have them, I will do them from time to time, but it's not something I like to seek out. I call them slumber party skincare. Like, ooh, look at us. We're doing a fun sheet mask that's got blossom nectar and butterflies all over it. Snap a photo, but like, it's not really gonna revolutionize the health of the epidermis. 
Someone commented, I think it was on my TikTok, that they had been pursuing dermaplaning for their acne. And I have to caution about that because dermaplaning, it's kind of, people kind of bill it as like exfoliating and good for your skin. Yes, it does exfoliate just like shaving does. But it can cause irritation. I know I always say it can cause irritation, but for sure with dermaplaning, it definitely can. And that can actually end up worsening acne. As a matter of fact, I would caution, if you have acne, especially if you have active pimples, breakouts, I would caution against this whole dermaplaning thing because it really can aggravate that for you. But I can see the appeal because it does kind of smooth everything out and improve the way your makeup goes on and everything. As it does that though, remember, it's also gonna enhance penetration of stuff that you put on your skin and that can lead to more irritation. Plus, somebody might do something like this and then continue to use their exfoliating skincare products like salicylic acid, alpha hydroxy acid, and that's a lot of, of smoothing away and exfoliating. Ultimately, that will lend itself to more irritation. So you gotta be very careful if you're gonna go down this putting a razor to, to your face and removing hair, albeit vellus hairs with the peach fuzz, but yeah. What are we doing over here? Okay, I heard from you guys, because y'all know I'm a huge fan of the hydrocolloid patches for reducing the compulsion to pick. The Hero Cosmetic ones are the best, in my opinion. But I've tried out a lot of them. Like, I've tried out the Zit Sticker ones. Ooh, looks like they got... The, ooh, I'm super distracted there, but... Zit Sticker is now here, so we'll dance back over. But you guys were telling me that the star face ones don't stay on and are not good. So I'm gonna take your word for it. But what has Zit Sticka come out with? Looks like they have a sunscreen breakout proof. That is a lie. And I mean a lie in the sense that there's no such thing as a breakout proof any anything. I mean, anything can aggravate your skin. Anything can be irritating and anything can cause breakouts for people. I mean, it's just not, yeah, it's misleading, but regardless this is a this is a hybrid sunscreen which i like hybrid sunscreens personally they're kind of a combination between chemical and mineral so the cast is like somewhere in between an all zinc and the zero cast of a chemical this has tea tree oil in it though you know there is some research that suggests that tea tree oil can be helpful for acne unfortunately it's an essential oil and essential oils are not pure substances. They're like a mixed bag of different things and put on the skin. It can be very irritating. Hydrocolloid patches with niacinamide. I think these are the ones I've tried before. Deep zip patch, flatten and clear. What is this? Yeah, see the micro darts? I don't know. Basically, this comes with these cleansing swabs that have tea tree oil in them and salicylic acid. What? The patches themselves have niacinamide and salicylic acid. And niacinamide is a good ingredient, but it can cause irritation and the little darts just enhance the penetration of it. So you have to be careful in, in the sense that th this could be more irritating. What's in the hyper fade one? Niacinamide, licorice root, kojic acid, tranexamic acid. So this is a patch that's aimed at minimizing the chance that your acne will heal with a dark mark. And these are good ingredients for that. But again, with the caveat that these little micro darts enhance the penetration and then other under occlusion, they're more likely to be irritating. And with hyperpigmentation, anything that causes irritation can worsen hyperpigmentation. What is this? Pore back unclogging mask. Is this a clay mask? I'm gonna bet it is. Yep, kaolin and bentonite. That's helpful for absorbing some sebum, AKA oil, off the surface of the skin and from within the pore. It also has sulfur in it though. That's anti-inflammatory and helpful for acne, niacinamide. You put this on, leave it on for 20 minutes and then remove it. I like clay masks for oily skin. It, it just temporarily degreases the skin and by removing that excess sebum, it can help potentially in minimizing breakouts, and it can just help products go on a little bit more smoothly, evenly, especially sunscreen. A lot of people with oily skin, they find that sunscreen looks super shiny. Looks like Dickinson's got a new bottle. Witch hazel is an astringent. It can calm down redness temporarily. It can be soothing, but it also can be irritating. It's like one of those, you either get along well with it or you don't. It's not like a miracle by any means, but some people do find that it's beneficial for them. Other people find that it is problematic for them. Again, no predictors there on that one. 
I rather enjoy this cleanser as a side note. If you're in the market for a gel facial cleanser, it's quite good. Side note, you can get these Flamingo razors now at Costco. Likewise, they also have the Harry's ones. I've never used either, so I'm not saying they're good or anything. I just saw them here and was like, I don't know, for people who are a fan of them, heads up if you are a club member, which if you're not, why? Maybe because you don't have one in your area, I'm sorry. Did we talk about these recently? I feel like I almost did in a recent Target video, but then I don't know that the footage ever made it in. But it looks like Olay has hand masks now. Um, which I like the Aveeno ones, but I think these look pretty, oh, these have fragrance in them, which can be irritating. It's their hand serum. Honestly, this is why I hate the word serum. Like, is this really just a hand lotion? I'm calling it a serum. Niacinamide hand serum. See, the word serum is just out of hand. It's out of hand. <laughs> They're using it on everything. What are these hand washes by Olay? They look like they'd be fun. Notes of watermelon and agave body wash. That looks like it would smell good. Well, they came out with even more body washes. Nourishing, nourishes for glowing skin. Cocoa butter and manuka honey. There's nothing in this that is gonna address hyperpigmentation. If anything, over bathing and using too much body wash, especially like on the arms and legs, you don't need to be using body wash there unless visibly soiled. It can just dry out the skin, irritate it, and aggravate hyperpigmentation. Ew, but strawberry and mint? I'm not gonna lie, Olay is, is tempting me with some of these scents. Looks like Dove has an apple scented deodorant. All right, y'all, spring will be here and then summer. So hair removal is um, something that people, people are always interested in. Now, if you are using a topical retinoid, like a dapolene or a prescription tretinoin, tazerotin, altrino, um, you don't wanna do waxing because, because you will end up getting little sores. Waxing or sugaring, anything that, that's gonna like rip out the hair, it will take some of your stratum corneum with it. And if you're using retinoid, that's already very thinned out and smoothed out. So there's less to pull away and you get little sores. Um, yes. But one nice thing about waxing, which is what these are, NADS. I've actually used NADS before. Um, one nice thing about waxing is that it does it does reduce the frequency with which you have to do hair removal because it's removing the hair down lower in the follicle as opposed to shaving where it's just cutting it right at the surface. So it takes, you know, you get, it buys you a couple of extra days, so that's nice. What? Okay, this is almost too much. Nads came out with what looks like dip and dots, but bikini wax <laughs> like who who comes up with this who comes up with this who's like so we need to come out with a new concept let's combine waxing with dip and dots the ice cream of the future do we still call dip and dots the ice cream of the future seeing as it's been around for like 10 or 15 years is it just the ice cream of now and people also ask, what about shaving if you're using a topical retinoid? You have to be careful. Um, you certainly can shave the face if you use topical retinoid, but remember, it's going to make it more likely that you will have razor burn or irritation. So you wanna be a little bit more careful and don't press too hard with a razor because that can lead to razor burn, which you're gonna be more likely to develop if you're using a topical retinoid. After you rinse off the shave residue, Make sure you apply a moisturizer. I know it's really popular to use like aftershaves from, at least men have always been the ones for which that type of product is marketed. And those can be soothing, but sometimes they're just laden with fragrance and irritating stuff. Moisturizer is a good thing to use or like a hydrating toner. Check out my video on hydrating toners. I have a few recs there. Bleaching the facial or body hair is another option. It's tends to actually be a little less irritating provided you don't leave the bleach on there too long. Make sure you follow the instructions. But this is this is another option. I mean, you'll still have peach fuzz or hair there, but you won't have the irritation that comes with hair removal. What is this Flamingo Ingrown Spot Treatment? 
lactic acid. Willow bark is anti-inflammatory, but it's not the same as salicylic acid. Tea, so this has centella. This just kind of looks like a little overpriced little moisturizer. Ah, uh, yes, here are the Harry's razors. Boy, they have quite the selection. Comment below on if you have used Harry's razor. Ooh, Urban Skinner X came out with a men's line. They have some good products, but I don't know what the men's line is offering. What is this? Razor bump and dark spot treatment. Lactic acid, glycolic acid, niacinamide. That looks, oh, tea tree oil. Hmm. We have an exfoliating face wash scrub with tea tree oil and citrus extracts. That doesn't look so great either. Daily even toned soothing moisturizer. Water niacinamide. Hmm. Yeah, the citrus in these, I mean, it's less of a problem than like a face wash, but it's just an, an ingredient that some people are more likely to develop irritation to. This Duke Cannon aftershave balm, ice cold, alcohol free, menthol to cool. Menthol does give, menthol is fragrance, but it does have a cooling sensation that can help with itch. This has tea tree leaf oil in it, again, that can be very irritating. Tamanu oil was all the rage a few years ago. Um, I covered that in a video if you want to learn more about Tamanu oil. Anyways, this packaging reminds me of Bath and Body Works a long time ago. They used to have this drying lotion and they made it in like the traditional sun ripened raspberry scent, but they used to have a masculine scent that was actually quite nice. And it was like a liquid talc. I always rather enjoyed that because it was good if you had like sweaty palms. But this packaging reminds me of that. But this is just like a shea butter moisturizer with scent. Ew, what is this? Is it just me or does that look like a jock strap? It kinda does. Um, oh, it's just a loofah. Ew, chapstick had to change it up. What is this? Little teeny tiny tube of liquid lip, a uh, lip oil. As a side note, Neutrogena has these lip oils. I think they have flavorants in them, but I've been using one and I actually rather like it. It hasn't been ir irritating my mouth. What does this have in it? Yes, yeah, the grapefruit peel extract that may be irritating on the lips. Lips are more vulnerable to irritation. They don't have as much going in their favor. Ooh, shea butter. What is Sunwink? Beauty Fruit Punch. Goji Acai Amla. Those are sources of dietary antioxidants. This looks like the kind of thing I would enjoy. What is it? Is it like a tea or it's just a powder to put in smoothies? Eat your fruits and veggies. Eating your fruits and veggies can definitely help your skin handle the damaging effects of UV better, provided you're wearing sun protection. What is the digestion lemonade? Mm chicory root powder. These look kind of good. Cacao Clarity. Let me know if you guys have tried these. I don't think they're gonna, you know, change your skin dramatically, but they look tasty. <laughs> what is this? Skin Hydration Aid. Watermelon Crush. Okay, diet taking a hyaluronic acid supplement. There's some weak research to suggest that it does improve skin hydration. Very small studies. The doses are kind of all over the place. Shazandra. Sounds like a P.D. Pablo song. Shazandra. <laughs> Coconut collagen boost. Skin here. Collagen is the same kind of thing. It, there are some studies actually showing that skin hydration is improved, but it's kind of in, inconclusive. Unconclusive, inconclusive skin here and nail support creamy coconut coconut milk powder it can cause some digestive upset does this actually have collagen in it or is it just powdered coconut and vanilla oh bamboo extract hyaluronic acid this doesn't look like it actually this doesn't actually have collagen in it it has a lot of biotin in it though be careful biotin Biotin is not evidence-based for improving hair, skin, or nails in the absence of true biotin deficiency, which is very, very rare. But biotin uh, can interfere, actually, with blood tests like thyroid hormone tests. So, yeah. Oh, you guys. Elf has a cleansing balm. 
Has anyone tried this? I like e.l.f. products. I'd be interested to try this. Although, e.l.f. is pretty affordable, but $10? Is that how much this is? That seems kind of steep for that little tiny pod. I tr I recently reviewed this for you guys, the Pure Skin Line. It's, it's okay. It's pretty good. I like the cleanser especially. It's a good gentle cleanser. I suggest getting this little kit though to see if you actually like them. I wish more brands would do these little kits like this before you had to commit to the big size. All right, the fact that I have one bar left on my camera tells me that we got a lot of good footage in there. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. You know, I come in here about once a month and shop around. So if you like this type of video on the end slate, I'll put my last one. There are some brands that are in there like Bioma that I reviewed last time. So if you wanna check that out, definitely watch that next. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.